All right, everyone. Thank you for joining and coming back to our electrical estimating class. In this little snippet, we're going to go over the details on what's important on uh, determining our wire and conduit runs and how we approach it. Okay, so every, uh, well, first we're going to begin with the, <clears throat> the lighting plan. And so depending on the architect or whatever, the electrical engineer, you know, the amount of branch circuit runs that they show you will be there or they may not be there. <clears throat> but it's just kind of like a rule of thumb uh, when approaching this. Okay, so we know that our lights are controlled two different ways, either directly by a toggle switch or they're controlled by lighting control. And so the way that we know that they're controlled by lighting control, the subscript on top of the, or somewhere near the light, <clears throat> will tell you which lighting control the sets of lights are attached. Okay, so in terms of running our conduit, we basically just have to say, okay, which lights are run together? So all of these LL1s are going to the lighting control they call D. <clears throat> so we run them all together where, <clears throat> excuse me, this uh, these lights, I don't know why I can't, my throat always needs to be cleared once we start. Um, and then these uh, LL4s are controlled by A. Okay, and so what we are trying to do is, you know, every electrician, uh, every estimator is going to have a different way of running it because there is no set way. But you want to just do a good enough job or a well enough job in order to say that you've covered everything. Okay, and so on this set, they're showing us some branch circuits and then they're, they're giving us lights that have no connection. So we pretty much have to use our imagination on how to run them. Okay, and you know, I have a lot of clients that are electricians and I mentioned the way that I do it and I've never got kickback and we won a lot. So again, if you have 10 electricians, there'll be 10 different amounts for the electrical estimate. But the one thing you can guarantee yourself if you have a methodical way of doing it, that you're gonna be on point pretty much all of the time. Okay, so. Again, it really depends on how much information they give you on the plan itself, okay? And so the way that we do it here is two ways. We have the branch circuits that are shown. So we'll just measure those. How many linear feet exactly, right? Because the plans are to scale. So if that's 12 feet, 10 feet, well, your actual amount of linear feet for that conduit stretch is 10, 12 feet. And so normally for uh, branch circuits, they'll use MC cable. And then for all of the home runs, <clears throat> they will use uh, the wire configurations, number 12. All right, so in order to, for your lighting plan, in order to do the runs, you know you just first make the measurements of what you see. And then as we do here, kind of just connect all of the ones that have the same subscript, maybe not more than six at a time. You know, I mean, really, and more than six or ten at a time and cut it off there because at that point we're going to run it to the lighting control, which is represented right here. Okay, so that's just uh, the switching uh, lighting control. Okay, for LC1, LC through LC2, LC3, lighting control, lighting contactors. Okay, so again, it really depends on the plan. It really depends on what's given. And so we will run all of our branch circuits, MC cable that we would normally uh, in real life run with MC cable, run that all together. That would be this was shown and this what we had to make up. Okay, so we would have to continue through. All the A lights, we'll run them all together. And then all of the night lights, right, are all run together separately. So this would be run with any one of them. Even the emergency lights, they're all run separately. They wouldn't be run with our regular lights. And so, you know, in this case, with this type of <laughs> uh, configuration, it's pretty much a crapshoot. But as long as you are covering everything, you know, as long as everything is covered and you're running everything to the lighting contactors, 
So you can imagine by the time you finish, it's going to be a spaghetti mess. All of something like this is going to be everywhere. But that's what it's supposed to be because that's what it would be in, in real life. And so, you know, you want to make sure. And, and what I typically do. Now, the panels, the one thing for the lighting plan, okay, because it only shows you all the lights and how they're controlled. It will not show you in great detail where the power panels are. But this one does show you, it gives you the A, B, and C because you have to run the home runs here and the distribution panel, okay? And so, for instance, like these lights, all the A's, looks like they're running to lighting control C. And so, yeah, we would run these all together and then crisscross them. And then usually no more than these would run together and then we would run, you know, every six or eight lights together, depending on the lighting control. And then the night lights, the NLs would all run separately together. Okay, so <laughs> the whole point here is if you have 10 people, it's going to be 10 different things. But you want to make sure you just cover everything as best you can. You know where it should be a branch circuit similar to this. We run it here and then we've got to run a home run because, yeah, this is going to position number seven on panel B. So, you know, we've got to run it there. Okay, so we've got to account for the conduit in the best way we know how in a methodical way. So we're accounting for everything. Okay, so that's the lighting plan. <clears throat> the power plan is going to be even crazier. Okay, because in the power plan, okay, so you see that some of these are run together. So this means that the outlets, right, are going to position 10, panel B similar to the lighting configuration. So we can run branch circuits, all of that together. Stop it there. And then we can connect this up to six circuits. So we connect that and then run it to the home run. Connect these and run it to the home run. Okay, so in the instance of these, these are going to Panel A, position six, so we can connect these. So anytime you see they're going to the same position in the panel, the imaginary conduit can, <clears throat> can be used to connect it. And a lot of times on the power plant, everything is its individual home run, like this one. Junction box, home run to, <coughs> excuse me, panel C, positions one and three, and then neutral, okay? So... 42, 42, we can run these together. 42. That's why this takes a little time because you have to have an eagle eye. Make sure you're running everything together. And then running, running the home run to the panel. So you can imagine by the time you're finished with this, it's going to be spaghetti too. So normally you will start. Got to read uh, note four to see if there's something else. It's a waterproof switch of some kind. All right, so like here, home run, going to the distribution uh, panel. Four number fours, one number eight, ground in a one and a quarter inch conduit. So this is to scale, right? So physically this on the roof. So you want to give it a, what, an extra 10 or 15 feet to go up to the roof and additional to go through the roof. But our job here is to get pretty close, you know, pretty close and accurate to a, a nice representation of the conduit and wire for the power. Okay. So, I mean, we could physically run it from the breaker to right here. So however many feet that is, that would be however many linear feet for this, plus about 10, 15 feet because it is on the roof. Okay, so in the same way, branch circuits can be run with the MC cable. But home runs always have to be either what it tells as it is or it, typically number 12s. And everything's running to what? Panel B, A, or C. And so our job as estimators is to do our best to see in real life how many linear feet of 
any wire that's associated in conduit associated with this project, how many linear feet can you know do we need? And this is a very tedious job when you're talking about the power plant because you have to take it into account everything. Okay, so we have a home run from the condensing unit, and that's again on the roof. And so we have to home run this configuration to the distribution panel. So it's however many feet here, over. And that's typically we try to keep some uni uniformity about it. You know, we're not just going to say here and then there. Then. No, we just try to keep uniformity when you're running everything because that's what you would really do in real life. You know, you wouldn't just run it all over the place. So you try to be uniform in the way that you lay down the linear feet. So in the same manner, you would have to do it, okay, if, uh, if you did in real life, okay? So now we, always, we are always going to need how many linear feet from the distribution panel. And in, our, in this exercise, we have a um, transformer, and I believe the transformer is on the site, right? It's on the site plan. So, you know, we'd have to go get the site plan, figure out where it is here, and then bring that underground feeder to the um, breaker. It doesn't even show that here, I don't believe. Just the distribution panel. Okay, but there is a transformer, <clears throat> a uh, meter, and all of that associated with this that we would see on the site plan. And we'd have to go and figure out the physical distance from the site plan transformer to the distribution panel, right? But we can use this, and I kind of already did it, because in our single line, right, we have to have a certain linear feed of power feeder that's going from the distribution to all the other panels. So I was like, okay, let me measure the length of <clears throat> from one end of the distribution to the other end of the beach to see what our maximum length away in real life these panels are. So as we can see, they're really in, they're very close to each other. They're, you know, not far at all. So when I have to go to the single line and, de and determine, and let's just do that real quick. Go to the single line, right? And now determine, let's go here, because the single line is just going to show us everything in a line. It's not going to say how many linear feet these things are apart. That's why we have to go to the actual plans, right? The actual sheets, figure out where where is this physically on the sheet? Where is that physically on the sheet and measure the distance because we have to what? Determine how many linear feet of number four, four zero, da 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 to connect these two. Same thing with here, right? For this connection and this connection <clears throat> and this connection. And then we have to, you know, the lighting contacts, we've got to figure out where they were. They, it did show on the on the plan where they were. Well, the switches, it showed where they were. So we're just going to assume, well, you can't assume, but it really didn't show on the plans where the physical location of these were. But you have to do something when you're doing an estimate. So, yeah, I'm going to assume that they are above just like this, and I would give <clears throat> these links to maximum 10 feet each. And as you can see, they're not marked like these are, right? It tells you what they need that to be. So to me, that would tell me it's just number 12. Or if I look at the lighting contactor configuration, it probably tells me what that is. Okay, so... Single line diagram is not going to tell you, give you any information about the physical distance between the distribution panels and anything here. That's why you always have to go back to the power plant and say, okay, where is where's the distribution panel in real life? Oh, okay, they're right next to each other. So they're not more than five feet apart. So I would say five feet from there and then 10 feet just to be generous and then 15 feet. So you can determine all of your, yeah, let me go back. <clears throat> now you can determine all of your power feeder links. Because, yes, 
all of the individual panels are fed from the distribution panel. So yeah, you need to know the length of this to determine this, the length of that to determine how many linear feet of that, and the length of this to determine how many linear feet of that. So you have to go to the physical plan. This is simply for information purposes for you to send to the supplier and you to get information about the panels, but no distance, length, anything like that information about the length of the feeders. All right. Now let's go back to, okay, so for the lighting plan, okay, the, the imaginary links, because we know that the uh, lights are controlled by lighting contact or directly by switch. And the subscript on each one tells us which lighting control each one is controlled by. Therefore, we can connect these in tandem, right, like these are. And I would say just for simplicity and, and safety sake, don't connect any more than six or eight. And then those six or eight are going to be run to the lighting contactors. Just run to here for simplicity's sake. Okay, so you got imaginary connect to all of these, just like these, then you'll get your total. And you go to the power plan, very much more difficult. And so the subscript, uppercase subscript, if I see uppercase subscript are the same, then that tells me I can do like I did tandem with the lighting. But if they're not, then each one of these has its own home run directly to that position on that panel. Like these are same position 25, connect in tandem, run to the home run. These same position 10, run in tandem, go to the home run. 27, go to the home run. Okay, so that part's a little more difficult and start at one end and then work your way out. That way, as you work in all of your links to the panel, you can see, <laughs> you can see. Okay, because once you start here, start you can't see. So you can't start here. Okay, don't start here and go boom. Because this will be all messy by the time you're trying to determine the lengths of these. So start at the nearest one, closest to the panel. So I'm going to run it to DP. Here's DP. I'm going to run it uh, real nice. Boom. Then I'm going to look and see what 4 is telling me to do. Then I'm going to run that to... What A, boom, and then what's next? Let me run this one, you know, closest to the farthest out. A22, I'm going to come in the building. A, boom. Okay, here's another one. Distribution, da 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 da, right here, and up, and here. Got to make sure I, I mark this so I know it's a different wire than number 12s. Okay, so. <clears throat> Wire and conduit runs are last because it is the most challenging and it takes the most attention and, you know, but as long as you are accounting for everything you see, you're going to be fine. At 10%, you're going to be even better. Okay, so that completes the uh, electrical estimating wire and conduit run little snippet to go along with our classes. Does it make a difference? The set of construction documents, the set of plans you receive, we're going to look for, we're going to measure branch circuits we can see first. So we're going to measure those first. Then we're going to start to tackle the ones that we know. We're going to connect the ones that we know are all on the same lighting control. And then we're going to run the home runs. And we run the home runs. Okay, so any questions or concerns, please sign up at our homepage at SF johnsonconsulting.com uh, lower right you can get online office hours to fit your time and your availability because we do want you to learn this and to be totally awesome meet us for the next class which is pricing and programming the excel or formatting i should say the excel spreadsheet thanks a lot guys and i will see you in our next class so we can just stay so awesome have a good everything i'll talk to you and see you guys soon